This is the story of the destruction of all of my prized t-shirts. So first I gathered all things that were precious and good to me, including many shirts that I still wear, and then after doing some pretty sketchy measurements, I proceeded to cut them all out into small pieces that were no longer recognizable as shirts. In retrospect, maybe I should have been a little bit more careful with measuring these because several of them turned out to be not the right size at all whatsoever. So I had to do all sorts of janky improv improvising sewing to be able to make them fit, but they all did after much tears and many hours where I should have been sleeping and not sewing okay. Fun fact, there are exactly 42 squares in the thing that I made, which is a quilt, which you probably know by now from the, the title of this video, even though I haven't said that straight out yet. But 42 is my favorite number. For uh, no particular reason. Actually, there's a, there's a reason, but yeah. So what I'm doing here in this shot is cutting out something called interfacing, which you iron onto the back of the shirt like this because t-shirt material is fickle and hard to sew with. And so by putting some stiff stuff on the back, it makes it a lot easier to use. So after doing that to all the squares and making some other pretty squares that I didn't show you, I laid it all out and chose the design. This next thing's a joke that I thought was kind of funny while recording. Now I need a 12 inch segment of cardboard and I found a box. Hopefully it's a foot long. It's a shoe box. Uh, uh, after you don't mind my puns, I laid everything out and started sewing it into strips, which I then sewed all together. So I just made each individual strip and pinned it down along the side and then sewed it down. After this section, I had a bit of an existential crisis and then needed some help. So that's the change in scenery. Oosh. I like slipping onomatopoeia and sound effects into my vernacular. Okay, so I laid it all out, the bottom and then the fluffy stuff and then the quilt top and then I tied it all together just like that. And then after I tied it all together, um, it was time to sew the edges. So I went ahead and did that on this really bougie sewing machine that was super fancy. It had like 13,000 different attachments and it was, it was a touchscreen sewing machine, you know. I, I used a flip phone for most of my life, so that's that's pretty f fancy stuff. Anyway, so I sewed together and then did the sides and that, ooh, pretty. Oh, and now you get to see the back. Ah, it's a nice map globe pattern that I liked. So this is how it feels having a laughing fit slash existential crisis while sewing, but it's okay because this is what it feels like when it's all done. So here are some glamour shots after adding and edging. And here's the picture I'll sign one day when I'm famous and people want me to sign things for no reason. Okay, here are some pictures of the quilt on my bed. Now I made the quilt so it can fit a full size bed, but since I'm still to have a twin size bed, it works too, but when I grow up and become a big kid, then this one will work too. Uh, also, it works on either side because it's double-sided, which is really fun. And that's how I made a quilt. <laughs>